This tutorial is going to cover how to add rhinestone text to a vector shape rather than just a vector line. I'm going to go ahead and grab a new page here and I'm going to make a circle with my ellipse tool. If you hold down the control button on your keyboard while you're using the ellipse tool, it will make a perfect circle. If I have my circle selected, while I click on my rhinestone text tool, it will add it right to my circle. You'll notice it's at the top and center of my circle. I had drawn my circle from the upper left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner. If I do that in reverse, from the upper right hand corner to the bottom left, and choose my text, it will actually make it inside at the bottom of the circle. So it does make a difference on how you draw your circle within Corel. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this guy for now. So here I have my text on a circle. Once again, you'll see my Action Apps object properties is set to text. I can go back and forth from text to rhinestone. So I can, of course, set my rhinestone to a different stone size. Let's go ahead and make it a stone size 6. Hit Apply. Go back to the text so we can edit this. I'm going to type in Action. Hit Apply. Let's go ahead and change our font. I'm going to choose Serif. Hit Apply. I don't want my font so large, so I'm going to take my height down. We'll do it to 25 millimeters. Hit Apply. You can see I have some overlapping rhinestones. That's okay if I have a couple like this because I can always go back and take those out and edit them. But I think this looks pretty good right now. If you remember from the beginning of this tutorial that the direction in which we made the circle affected how the text was applied to it. So if I want to add a line of text at the bottom here, I simply draw my circle in the opposite direction, from the upper right down to the bottom left. I am going to make this circle larger than the previous one. and apply text to it. Let's make this text match the upper one. So first I'm going to set my stone size to a stone size 6. Now let's go back to the text option. I'm going to type in my text here. Illustrated. You'll remember we used the serif font and we did a height of 25 millimeters. Hit apply. This is a perfect example of when we need to use the text edit tool. This one right here. We need to adjust our kerning, our spacing of our text. So I'm just going to slide these yellow dots out here to add more spacing in between these letters. There we go, we've pushed those leather, letters further apart from one another. Once we have it how we like it looks, then we can go ahead and go to Arrange and Break Action Apps Object Text Apart. We're going to remove the circle. I am going to need to do this to both of these. Now it is not text on a circle, 
It's just rhinestones on vector lines. Then the last thing I'm going to do is remove my overlapping rhinestones. If I zoom in here, I can look at each letter and make adjustments. I can use my rhinestone tool like I was before and delete stones and move stones that way. But the nice thing I can also do is actually with my vector shape tools and pick tools, I can adjust the actual vector lines on which the stones are laying. Just make these, uh, see how I'm making them smaller? That way my spacing is still perfect and the straight lines are still perfect. So I can adjust these stones in those different ways. Or I can adjust the, um, the letters in those different ways. So I'm just going to go through here and see wherever I have stones that are overlapping, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just using my pick tool to make this vector line slightly smaller. Therefore, my spacing on my stones is still staying perfectly um, equidistant from one another. Here you can see on my L, I have this line of stones that's kind of overlapping in the other ones. But here I have a corner. And if you remember how we edit corners, we can use the rhinestone corners tool. So I can actually just set an anchor right onto that corner and it shoves a stone there. So these that's the nice thing about converting these from text to vector lines is they just become like any other rhinestone object that we've been working with inside of Corel. And so that is how you apply a text to a circle um, onto a vector shape. This will work for any shape, even if we use like a polygon or square tool, we can still add text to it. But an ellipse tool is probably going to be the most common shape that you would use. And so that is how you apply rhinestone text to a vector object.